And we're back. Nice steady cam work. Yeah. That's pretty cool. We're back. <laughs> it's .NET Conf 2018 by the community for the community. I'm here with John Galloway from Hello. the .NET Foundation. Thank you, sir. Uh, discovered a world of .NET. Lots of great stuff for the next couple of days, eh? Yes. Tons of stuff. Uh, hopefully you're watching us live right now. You might be at one of the many local parties. Uh, some parties are happening right now live and mm -hmm. watching and hanging out and sharing content. Uh, but also later this week, we're going to have uh, content in your native language. We're also going to see uh, kind of rolling thunder with other events throughout the world, aren't we? Yep. Uh, starting this week and then going through the entire month of October. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, lots of good stuff. So in case there's any confusion, uh, I am Scott Hanselman and this is John Galloway. And we just want to share with you for a little bit before we get into some more technical content later in the day, some of the cool work that's going on inside of the community. We want to showcase the community and the work that you're making because it's a whole new world of open source.net. And we don't want to just focus on stuff that Microsoft is making since something like 60% of the contributions to .NET are now outside of Microsoft. Mm -hmm. It's so important. Uh, a couple of the things that we wanted to share with you are some websites that we've been noticing pop up lately. And you brought this one to my attention. This one's called discover.net. What is yep. going on here? This is really cool. So Dave Glick is, is putting this, he, he's been building the, it's, it's like a labor of love. He keeps adding features on and stuff. So there's things like there's new news, there's projects that he calls mm -hmm. up. If you scroll down on the side, this is really cool. He calls up help wanted. Mm -hmm. So on the right side, all these projects where it's like, hey, here's where you can get involved. Here's, a, here's an issue you can jump in on. Oh, I see. So help wanted are like, these are issues that you could potentially jump in and participate in. These are exactly. open source things, much like the website Up for Grabs. Up for Grabs, exactly. So he pulls from several different places. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this kind of aggregates a ton of stuff. Um, there's also a thing in here uh, for events, upcoming conferences and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So he's Let just me jump out of the slides and switch yeah. over to a live view. So here's discover.net right now. And if we just take a, oops, we just take a look up here at the, at the URL so that you can go there as well. It's discover.net. Yep. All right. And you were saying, just he's Scroll got these down. help wanted things yeah. down at the bottom. He's got different um, different got recent issues, recent issues, um, up discoveries, cool stuff that's going on in the .NET community. Yep. Whether it be a podcast or some video, all kinds of stuff. It's a great portal to find awesome .NET open source community resources. Yep. Pretty fantastic stuff. Yeah. Now, another one of those things that's kind of new that we've recently noticed is, is built with .NET. So it's built with DOT, mm -hmm. .NET. And these are projects that are built with the .NET framework, with .NET Core, with Xamarin, with Mono, with Mono Game, Unity, any of those things. And this is really important because you can go up there and submit a project. Yeah. So if you've made something and your, your boss or bosses will let you talk about it, yep. you should go up to built uh, with .NET and submit it. So you can see, for example, some of the really innovative stuff that we've seen at previous uh, .NET comps, like Haslayer, right? Doing FPGA hardware work with .NET. Yeah. Really, really cool stuff that you would ordinarily have to stumble upon while Googling or by binging with Google. What's so neat <laughs> with .NET is you can use it to build all kinds of stuff. Like yep. there's IoT and web and desktop and all that. And, and it's a little frustrating sometimes. It feels like after years and years, someone will say, oh, that thing was built with .NET and you didn't know all the stuff that's out there. So this is a great way to just kind of go like, whoa, mm -hmm. all this stuff, right? You know, from libraries to full projects. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So there are full projects and featured projects. It's mm -hmm. also worth pointing out that there are a, there's a NuGet spotlight. Mm -hmm. So if you've made a library and you're excited about that library and you want people to, to see that, sometimes it can be hard for your NuGet project to, uh, to get that visibility that you're a new library. So if you create something, go and submit it to websites like this and you can see them. We've got YAML libraries for .NET, monitoring, people doing smart home work with things like Netduinos. Uh -huh. A lot of people out there uh, work on one thing all day. I talk mm -hmm. to people every day, they're like, well, I'm a C-sharp developer and I do, I do WinForms, you know, Maybe that's not really exciting, but it works for me. I go, but wait a second, you know C Sharp. Yeah. You understand Windows. What if you took those C Sharp abilities or those F Sharp abilities and then applied it to your smart home, ran it on your Raspberry Pi? You right. may be a Docker container developer and you don't even know it. Yeah. 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 We really need people to understand that. So I would encourage you to check out builtwith.net and discover.net, both really great resources uh, by, of, and for the community. Yep. And kudos to the folks that are building those. And as you pointed out, both of those have prominent things where you can submit your stuff. Submit your projects, submit your events, submit, you know, like, so get involved. If you're watching this, 
submit your stuff. Let us know about it. Yeah, I, I would actually. It would be nice if you knocked their websites over with yes. your enthusiasm. <laughs> I'm sure that they would appreciate that if you did that right away. Um, one of the other things that we've been noticing lately in the .NET community that has a lot of people excited is the enthusiasm around. Twitch streaming. Mm -hmm. Now, Twitch streaming is usually where my kids go to watch Ninja play Fortnite, uh, but I learned first about uh, Twitch stream streaming, and that means specifically streaming live coding uh, mm -hmm. from, uh, from NoopCat. Uh -huh. uh, N-O-O-P-K-A-T, watching Suze Hinton every Sunday afternoon, she would go up and she would code live on Twitch. Yeah. Now, I know she's not the first live uh, Twitch coder, but she was the most fun and the one that I spent the most time with. Yeah. And she worked with Jeff Fritz and they shared best practices. And now Jeff is becoming a very prolific streamer and he is now joining a really cool community mm -hmm. of streamers, both on Mixer and on Twitch. So Jeff and friends uh, have worked together and have put together a Visual Studio Twitch channel. Yeah. Now the intent here is like taking over cable news, right? It's going to be a 24-hour live coding festival. Yeah. But right now, uh, it's whenever we have content. <laughs> yeah. But there's a lot up there. There's a I mean, ton of great content. You go there pretty much any time, and it's like, wow, there's stuff going on now. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's funny because it's easy to get head down coding and not think about how fun coding can be. Mm -hmm. But when you've got 25 people watching, some heckling, some saying, hey, you missed a semicolon, whatever it is, it's a lot of fun. I've yep. joined Jeff several times and it's a party. You know? It is fun. It is fun. You'd be surprised how enjoyable it is to actually watch someone code live and, mm -hmm. and spend time with them. And of yep. course, a lot of you are watching this right now on on Twitch or on Mixer, mm -hmm. so we appreciate that as well. One of the things that's exciting is that you can get involved, and if you are already a Twitch streamer, and this is important, if you're using Twitch or Mixer, let us know. Let us know on Twitter, talk to Jeff, mm -hmm. uh, let him know, and we can actually host you on the Visual Studio channel. So yeah. we'll give you an audience. We can host you, and we'd love it if you would host us, right? That would be great. You can go up to twitch.tv slash Visual Studio, you can see the rules and the code of conduct. You can follow everywhere you are, whether it be YouTube or Twitch or Mixer. We will be there. And there's a schedule of the regular times that uh, Jeff is up there. And if you want to get into Twitch streaming, you can take a look at both Suze Hinton's blog and Jeff's blog. They both have explanations of how to do this. Mm -hmm. He's got a green screen, <laughs> which is super cool. And you can see he actually floats his head yeah. over in the corner here and explains how to use open broadcasting system, which you've actually used now with the community stand-up. Yeah, we did yesterday. Mm -hmm. we, we were actually on Twitch yesterday. So yeah. we are now Twitch streamers also. We are. We are Twitch streamers. <laughs> uh, now, John is here as a representative of the .NET Foundation, and today we are actually excited to launch uh, a new website Yay! for the .NET Foundation. Website release party. Yeah, so, so the previous design was mm -hmm very desi uh, developer design, um, designed by a yeah. developer. So this is actual designers getting in and making it look look nice. This is, I'm excited about, mm -hmm. the code is pretty too. It's all Bootstrap 4 and the newest, you know, ASP.NET And this is Razor and ASP.NET Oh yeah, Razor Pages right. and everything. Um, one cool new feature in there, the project search, mm -hmm. is um, that's been, uh, Anthony Chu built that for us. Our previous project search was not very good. This mm. actually uses Azure search on the back end. Nice. It has cool stuff with functions. So when the repos change, it automatically rebuilds and everything. So we'll probably so. see blog posts, videos, and more information about the code behind this. Exactly. So people can actually go and see the things that power the back end yep. for. And, and I have noticed people like that I've never met have filed bugs on the code before. Mm -hmm. And th so this code is up on GitHub, and there's actually a link in the footer. If you see something wrong, you can go in and file a bug. So on this it. is an open source website. It as is well. an open source, yeah. That's so, great. Yeah. Now, one of the things that's important about the .NET Foundation that I appreciate about it is the idea of getting involved. It's so mm -hmm. important. Uh, a lot of people will look on a map and they'll say, I want to meet someone, I want to talk about .NET, I want to meet my peers, and I want to maybe give a talk, yeah. I want to attend a talk, and it's kind of hard to find those folks. But you've partnered with Meetup. Com. We did. So actually, last year at .NET Conf, we announced a new uh, initiative where we were making, we found a problem where if you were trying to find a meetup about .NET in your area, it was pretty hard to, to know for certain. You know, you would go and you would find random results. It wasn't right. good quality. So we announced a thing where .NET Foundation is sponsoring Meetup Pro. Mm -hmm. So, so any, uh, any meetup that wants to join us mm -hmm. can join the .NET Foundation's Meetup Pro group. And then you can, you can uh, we've got now over 200 worldwide that have joined. Wow. 
And so it's, it's just great to see the continued growth of this. And, uh, and then this is kind of our center of mass for the .NET communities. So for instance, when we were organizing things for .NET Conf, mm -hmm. uh, we, we used our mailing list to the meetup leaders as one of our primary ways to connect. Absolutely. So. And I know for a fact, I know for a fact that some of you are in some of these countries that mm -hmm. do not have a pin on them. You might say, well, wait a second. I'm in Mali, I'm in South Africa, I know that there are .NET user groups down here, but you just haven't told us about those. We mm -hmm. would love to get you up in here. We'd like to have you have the support of the foundation, maybe get some swag, get some visibility. We want to get the word out about yeah. your community because we're hoping to bring eyeballs of people who are enthusiastic about .NET to here. And if you are in you know, Tanzania or you're in uh, Iran, I'd love to see your uh, stuff up here. Exactly. Yeah? Yep. And the other thing is that when you start up at the .NET Foundation website and you say find a meetup, I want you to scroll down though and remind yourself that the .NET Foundation is a nonprofit that is here to support this ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And not only are we trying to get people to find meetups, but also create new meetups, start new ones, create new ones. Mm -hmm. You can learn about different upcoming events, but we've also got resources for you to make your own events. So if you're the first person who had this idea in your town or your country, yep. We want to have resources, so we've got what presentations and code. We do have workshops, and they're regularly updated. I've, uh, Shane, as you know, has been kicking butt on this. He's got continuous integration. So mm -hmm. as we make code changes for all our little snapshots for the workshops, the, it's there's CI builds for it, and actually the content from .NET Conf, mm -hmm. we're going to be putting that up there as well. That's a really so great fresh point. presentations for you. And this is important because .NET is not just global; it's also local. We want to make sure that people who are excited about .NET can give those presentations mm -hmm. in their own language. So you can take all of this code and all of these presentations and localize them. You know, I was thinking about it recently. The first talks I gave were at local meetups. Mm -hmm. uh, there were user groups and, uh, and there were lightning talks. Yep. And I was scared to death and I did a 10 minute talk and then I did it again and again. And I loved it, but I, I'm not sure if that was kind of how, you, I know a lot of developers I talked to, they got Absolutely. started at their meetups. Absolutely, and I think it's a great way to, to learn more about your craft. I think that people mm -hmm. talk about, uh, well, maybe I'm gonna be some kind of rock star developer. That's nonsense, rock star mm -hmm. developers, the thing, it doesn't exist. Yeah. I just want to hear about really excited, enthusiastic developers who just want to share. And I know that you want to share, you just maybe need an audience. Yep. So take some of this code, localize it, make it your own, uh, do your own thing. And again, in your local language would be great. Later mm -hmm. this week, we're going to have a lot of .NET Conf content in, the lo in your local language yeah. to make sure that we hit as many people as possible. Super important. So congratulations to you, sir. Thank on, you. Uh, on the new .NET Foundation website. Now it is got, you know, might be a typo here and there. I'm it sure literally just got pushed live about 10, 15 minutes ago. Yes. <laughs> uh, so if you find an issue, realize we'll call this the beta launch of the Foundation yeah. website, but make sure that you dive into the projects and you uh, figure out what's going on there. Now, there's a number of services that the .NET Foundation provides. If you have an open source project, mm -hmm. like let's say you're a one person, you know, Joe or Jane with a, with a project, yeah. uh, I worry about what's called the bus factor of the project. It's That's huge. what happens when, God forbid, someone gets hit by a bus. Well, I like to say wins the lottery. Wins right? the lottery. And That's it a just much nicer way to, to do it. it. Okay, we won't call island. it the bus yeah. factor. It's a lottery factor. So I invent Scott.NuGet package. Right. Right. It's amazing. Everyone changes the world. And then I win the lottery and I disappear. Mm -hmm. What happens to my project? That's a great thing. So there's two main things we try and do with that. One is we are an open source foundation that handles the kind of legal nitty gritty of assigning IP so that if you leave intellectual property intellectual property exactly and so that projects that join the .NET Foundation this includes projects Microsoft's contributed and includes ones that individual developers have contributed or teams of one or two mm -hmm. they donate their their intellectual property to the the .NET Foundation okay and and that way the project is all set and so not just the intellectual property, but also the kind of like the signing, you know, the GitHub rights and that kind well, of stuff. Let's, let's be really frank. I must say that there's been some small open source projects that I've worked on and the connection string to the production database, you know, may or may not have been in a sticky uh, note on my right. desk. Right. If that kind of access, the signing key, the certificates to for Baby Smash. Yeah. Right? As I've got a game for babies called Baby Smash. Where's the code signing certificate? Passwords. Where's the strong GXT, key? Yeah. Those kind of things are if I go away, how does my partner in right. crime go and deal with that? So we go through we've taken some time and we've learned over time how projects what works best for these projects. So we have things like LastPass accounts, Enterprise LastPass. We have 
you know, all just different kinds of services set up so that it's kind of a back office for your project. Nice, back yeah. office as a service. There you so go. it's that open source back office that provides you with the legal support, with the copyright support, trademarks, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the framework within which to do things. And that but, signing and certificate thing is another one. All, like those signing certificates, you need an SSL cert, you need just all this kind of random stuff mm -hmm. in the course of running your project, and you have two hours a week when your kids are in bed or whatever. Do you want to hassle with that or do you want to fix bugs? So we try and do some of this back office stuff mm -hmm. for you. So the .NET Foundation is supporting all of these groups, like I say, over 200 groups, 205, yep. more every day. We want to make sure that you add your group. I want your pins on this diagram, please. I want it on the map here. Now, there are a lot of meetups near you. I want to point something out. In May, there were about uh, 80,000 members. Yep. And now, uh, as we approach September, uh, 122,000 and, and basically 4,000 in the, just the last month. There, it's growing really quickly. And some of these are new people joining, and some of these are some that we just didn't know about before, but it was hard to find your meetup, it was hard to know, and so this we're really trying to use this to connect people. Right, so if you know that there's a meetup near you, no matter what country that you're in, please let us know, and then we'll mm -hmm. get you on the map, we'll raise those numbers, and we'll let more people get an opportunity uh, to speak, to share, uh, and .NET local meetups are a really great opportunity for you to get the word out about whatever you're working on. Yep. Now, we talked about how there are local events. I want to keep hitting on this idea of local, local, local. These are just some of the .NET Conf local events, the either be viewing parties or you know, rebroadcasting or talking about .NET at your local uh, location. Again, you might be disappointed that there's not one near you, mm -hmm. but what can you do about that? You can create one. So there's a link on this page on .NET Conf .NET. Mm -hmm. You click on local events and there's a link where you can add your own. Okay, so and what does it involve? Like, if I, do I need to get 100 people in a room to do a local event? Nope, no, I mean 20 people, whatever. Get, you know, get, set one up for your work. We're doing some in coordination with, with you know, people who are just putting on a viewing party at their work or whatever. Okay, so what's involved in this local event? I could, I could pre-download the, the, the yep. videos of the stuff that we're doing live right now will be available for download. Yep. So I could download that, I could bring the code locally. I could maybe alternate between showing Scott Hunter talking about .NET Core 3 and then a local person doing something innovative with .NET Core. Yeah, and we've had people build entire conferences around them, many conferences. Mm -hmm. We've had people take, you know, take a Saturday or you know, take a full day. We've had others where it's just it's a it's a slightly bigger user group meeting. Yeah, and those that's are a great, all great point. Probably one of the happiest things uh, that happened for me last year was watching. There was one in Lagos, Nigeria, mm -hmm. where it was it was just really cool. They sent they put up a bunch of pictures of it, and it was a whole room full of people. And I was like, this is it's worldwide. It's exciting, you know. No, and that's so. really a good point. One of the things you could also do to help us out is if you are at a meetup now, if you're uh, watching yeah. us, even in a team room, send us a picture, put it up on Twitter, hashtag dot net conf yep. c o n f right now. Hashtag it. We'll grab that information. We'll try to make sure that we retweet it or get the word out that you are out there right now. I'd love to see four people around a projector yeah. or uh, 200 or 300 people inside of a college university watching us right now. So to your point about what's involved in running one of these, mm -hmm. really, like, I, I know some people would fear commitment of, like, filling in this form, right? But by all you're doing is you're putting a dot on the map so people can find you, mm -hmm. and you're letting us know so we can send you content. We've That's already it. had one person yesterday on the .NET Foundation, uh, the .NET um, Community Stand-Up, mm -hmm. who said, wait a second, there's no one in Algeria. I know there's someone in Algeria. Well, you might should be. be you. <laughs> if you are in Algeria, then you should go and hook that up. Exactly. And to your point about what's going on in Africa right now, well, I've got this tweet from Sylvester that I thought was really cool. Cool. They've already put together local meetup events in Egypt, Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, South Africa, Mauritius, and Cote d'Ivoire. A lot of cool stuff going on. Uh, you should check out uh, on Sylvester's uh, Twitter there. He's got a link to some of the cool stuff that's going on with local events in Africa. And I also want to give a shout out to a really well organized event that's happening in Chennai. Well, in Chennai right now, you've got uh, uh, sponsored by Rev Debug, and they've got, look, Speakers from all over, including our own Bala, uh, who worked on the ASP.NET team and then moved over back to India, and he's going to be speaking there, as well as some MVPs and some community members from C Sharp Corner. So really cool stuff going on. We want people to know that we appreciate you and the work that you're doing, whether it be something small, like showcasing a tweet, mm -hmm. or something bigger to let you know that .NET loves you. Uh, you put together an interesting thing, which is a gifting program. So if you've given some fundamentally large contribution to .NET, whether some code or some fundamental documentation, you yeah. might get a gift in the mail and surprise you. Yep. And this is one of those things. It's, it's just, 
it can be thankless work to contribute something. And we want we want to let you know, hey, we appreciate it. You yeah. know, it really does. Right. I mean, you know, it might just be a note and a notebook and a challenge coin, but we just want you to know that uh, you're up late or you're on your lunch hour and you're doing some cool stuff with open source, whether it be featuring, featuring you on the stand-up or yeah. sending you something in the mail. And some of the really co cool contributions I've seen recently have been docs. Yeah. You know, it's a great way to get started. You click on the edit link and, and contribute something, you know, worthwhile. The docs team loves it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's really important to point out that you don't have to be someone who is contributing to the CLR, right, to the core runtime of .NET to be an appreciated member of the .NET community. It can be writing another unit test. It can be fixing a misspelling in my readme. Yep. All of that's appreciated or fixing John Galloway's website, <laughs> uh, which Please. you could be pull requests appreciated to the .NET yeah. Foundation website that's happening right now. And I also want to remind you about another fun community resource that uh, hopefully some of you are watching, if not all, is the ASP.NET Community Stand-Up. Yep. We try to do it on Tuesdays, but sometimes we're traveling. Yeah. We're getting better. We, we, yeah, so we've got it set up now where we used to do it from personal YouTube accounts. Now we actually have this .NET Foundation YouTube channel. And uh, so we alternate uh, 10 a.m. and 3.45 p.m. Pacific time so we can try and hit all the time zones. Absolutely. So, and we've been having a lot of PMs and engineers on the, from the team come in and do laptop demos of like, here's some code I wrote last week kind of stuff. It's, Absolutely. It's pretty neat. Now, so. community members might be small. It might be a one-person uh, group who's mm -hmm. putting together a project. It might be your NuGet package or your CMS or your website and you put that up on your GitHub, so you might be a one-person thing, or you might be a huge organization, a giant enterprise. You might be our friends at Little Debbie Snack Cakes doing work in .NET. I recently got uh, a message from a large company that you might have heard of that's using .NET with some success. You may not have heard about this, but you might be surprised. Roblox. My kids play this all the time. Constantly, yeah. Constantly. <laughs> this is a community. It's not just a game, but it's actually a community that you can build. So my kids can go into Roblox Studio. You can download this from the Windows Store, and it's available basically everywhere, okay? So why should I care about Roblox? Well, it turns out that they use .NET. Wow. Roblox uses .NET for their back end, and they are servicing 70 million users a month. That's active, engaged users a month. So my kids all this time have been talking to services that are written in .NET, and they're currently looking at moving to .NET Core and microservices and containers and things like that. So I'm just really excited to hear about companies big and small like Roblox or like the .NET Foundation. Yeah. We need to right? get them to submit to Built with .NET. I want some, <laughs> I want some Roblox action figures and some yeah. swag. Uh, but uh, you should definitely check that out. And I want to also point out, uh, it's super fun, uh, the Roblox dot, robloxdev.com, where oh. you can learn about their developer kit and learn Roblox, their APIs, and, and talk to their system and wow. build games for your family, for your friends. Yeah. That sounds fun. So big thanks to, to Roblox for giving us the heads up that they run .NET and that they're moving to .NET Core. That's A lot cool. of cool stuff happening, and I think being open source just makes the experience that much better for everybody. Now, we're going to have all kinds of great content for the next couple of days with .NET Conf, but I want to point out the virtual attendee party, right? Because this is a conference. Uh, Twitter and chat rooms are the hallway track where people hang out. But where do you go for the party? Mm -hmm. You should go and check out .netconf.net slash party. Let's go and do that right now and see what is the, uh, the party. slash party. Okay. So a virtual attendee party. And they're going to have this on day one after the last session. And they're going to be giving away a free Xbox One. Nice. Xbox One X, that's the 4K Xbox that you can, by the way, turn into a dev kit and write code in C Sharp. Uh, that virtual attendee party uh, on Twitter and on Twitch is going to be hosted by Richard Campbell from .NET Rock, so you probably know. Yeah. Know and love. So be sure to check that out on Twitch. Hang out with all of the uh, .NET team members and uh, get some cool prizes throughout that party. They're going to be kind of raffling stuff off, which is going to be great. Okay? I also want to point out that putting something like this together isn't just uh, John and myself sitting in front of <laughs> uh, a big screen. There are a ton of people that help out, uh, as well as our sponsors. And it's important to point those sponsors out. Of course, the .NET Foundation was a big fundamental part of what we were doing, but also other partners here, uh, you can see, Lead Tools and Gnostis, Dev Express, Progress, Telerik, Preemptive, DocuSign, .vvm, Twilio. All of this is meant to enable you to write code in .NET 
any developer, any platform, open source, all the way down. That makes me very, very happy. We're going to do a couple of questions as we end our little community update here. Yep. So if you have some questions, go ahead and tweet them at the hashtag .NET Conf. They'll put them up on the big screen, and John and I will answer them. The first one I see here from Lance is saying, do you have to have a minimum download count or follower count? Do you have to be famous to apply to the .NET Foundation? Like if I just make left pad right. and it's like one line, I make it a NuGet package. Does that go in the foundation? It's a great question. So. What we try and do is, it's, it really is case by case. We don't, we can't have a, you know, here is the minimum requirements. We, what we try and look at is, pri we prioritize by projects where a lot of people would be really sad if it went away. Mm. You know what I mean? And so, some, for some cases, that's a one or two person project that is used by many people. For mm -hmm. others, it's a, it's a project that's important because it's kind of like a, a leverage kind of point, that sort of thing. So we, we also kind of, we have a backlog and we work through case by case, so it does take some time to get them through. Okay. And we don't want to bring 9,000 projects in and give them bad service either, right? So we're kind of scaling up as I we see. go. But so the idea isn't that uh, you or the project or whatever is famous, it's that this is a, a fundamental part of the community or it's becoming an emerging thing that we all rely on. Yeah. If it were to go away, if it were to fall in disrepair, mm -hmm. if it would become unavailable in some way, that the community would, would suffer. Right. Okay, yeah. so that's a bit of a heuristic, but hopefully that answers Lance's, uh, Lance's question. Um, see, people are already letting us know. Look, Paul has got a local event in Singapore, .NET Conf SG .com. So if you're in or around Singapore, go and check that out. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, Ben, Co but ben Cotton is saying, is there a way to get the list of sites that I said so I don't need to re-watch the clip? Maybe you could go and tweet those for yeah. us. Yep. So we there's discover.net, discover.net, and builtwith.net. I will tweet both, and you yep. will tweet both with the .NET Conf hashtag, so go and check that stuff out. And then could you be more specific, John, about where uh, Joshin would find information on the .NET Foundation to register a new chapter. They've got .NET and Microsoft meetings in Mauritius, yeah. but they want to know where to sign up. So we've got more clear links on those. It used to be a little bit hard to find. Those are some big pink buttons right on the front page of, of the thing where it says okay. like, hey, so do if you we have, start here on the uh, .NET Foundation, yeah. so you can go and get involved, right? And go and say, find out more yep. and learn about how you can host your own meetup. And if there is not a clear link, there will be very soon. <laughs> right. So the idea is going to be host a meetup. So maybe a button right on the home page. Right yeah. now, browse resources might be a little bit vague. We'll try to make a literally a click a button, yeah, go here, fill out the up. form. So let's do that. Yep. So we'll make sure that uh, in the next build of the foundation website, probably after lunch, yeah, or, or uh, we'll add a super, super <laughs> clear place to do yeah. that. So that's a and great question. An important thing too, some people get hung up on like, hey, we organize using our own website. We don't use me. You know, the important thing is we just kind of have meetup. If you can register a meetup and let us know, that's we can get your pin on a map. But you don't have to like move everything over. Right, exactly. You know You're I mean? not just asking for people to host their websites there. Yeah. You just want a heads up. And if they have a feed of some kind where they can feed into Meetup, right? Yep. So if I understand correctly, you already are doing some great work in Mauritius. You already have your own website. That's all fine. Make sure that you sign up for Meetup Pro. You'll mm -hmm. get that through the .NET Foundation. You'll become a .NET Foundation associated user group. Yep. Let, your, let Meetup Pro know about your sessions. Where are they? How can people get there? Open to the public, et cetera. That feed will then show up on that map and in the feed at the .NET Foundation. So if anyone else in Mauritius wants to find an event, they don't have That's time right for there. it. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're going to stop right now, and we're going to move back over to uh, some uh, some breaks, some content. And I'm just I'm just I'm sorry. I apologize for staring off in the distance here, but uh, I'm just loving our Steadicam. Can we move it's over amazing. to the Steadicam because it's the slow <laughs> motion of the Steadicam. Everyone is needs me a very, Steadicam very to follow them. We appreciate their life. you from uh, all of our friends up here in Redmond, Washington. Uh, myself and John Galloway. Thanks for watching .NET Conf. Please tell your friends and your family and your parents to watch the show, and uh, we'll see you soon.